now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex, and this is the Ramble. We go till midnight tonight. Gee, Larry, the last time we were on, we had a lot of fun talking about death. This is Larry Brown, by the way, <laughs> folks. So, so this will be a death-free show. It, this it, should this be a death-free show? You know? I guess uh, people do get annoyed with it. But. You know, well, I mean, when you're speaking of death, you know, every now and then, uh, this is true. This is absolutely true, and I don't tell her this, but it's true. We're sleeping at night, and Marjorie is sleeping there, and she's dead still. Okay, so basically, I feel various parts of her body to see if she's still warm. <laughs> Jesus, you know, because she's so out of it. You know. And I go, wow, you know, but but I, you know, I mean, one of us is going to go first, and we don't know, we don't know who, you know, and she's not that much younger than I am that you know she can't go tomorrow, so whatever, you know, it's 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 depressing at this age because you like you're sitting there every day, you wake up and you go, is this the day, you know? So. Oh yeah, yeah. And you do I that probably it, at your age. I did that when I was young, but <laughs> you've ch- you've avoided uh, you almost drowned, and uh, then you were also in a plane crash. <laughs> I wasn't. I wasn't a plane crash. I mean, I don't talk about this that often because it was so uh, debilitating to me. No, it wasn't really. What happened was I was with uh, there was this uh, this writer for the Oakland Tribune. Uh, what was his name? I can't remember his name now. Yeah, Bill Mann. Bill, Bill Mann. And Bill Mann uh, said to me, I just got my pilot's license. <laughs> I just got my surgeon's license. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm, you're going to be the first person I'm going to operate on. Yeah. Uh, no, but I, I got my pilot's license. And um, why don't you meet me out at the Petaluma Airport? There's an air, airport in Petaluma. And uh, I will get in a plane, and then we'll go over to, like, uh, oh, I don't know, over to Vallejo and land the plane there, have some breakfast, and then come home. And I said, well, that sounds nice. You know, it's always fun. When people ask me that day, what did you do? Well, I got in a plane, and we flew to Vallejo and had lunch. You know. So uh, I meet him, and we go, and we go to, he takes off, and we go to Vallejo. And uh, we get our lunch, and then we get back in the plane, and he drives, b- f- drives, flies back to um, Petaluma, and we come into the airport, and it seems as though the Petaluma airport is one of the most dangerous airports in the country because there is a natural wind shear that happens at that airport. Was it Petaluma or Novato? Novato. Novato. You're absolutely Nova- right. No, Novato is notorious for the crosswinds. That's it. But that's the one. Okay. Yeah. They call it wind shear. And uh, you're right. You're so good. I forget things and you don't. I'm going to carry you around as like a. <laughs> people have these service well, dogs, you know. Uh, you could be. Uh, well, I know my, pilots that have flown in there. They, the crosswinds are horrible to land in. And they, uh, yeah, that, 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 that yeah. the uh, runways should have been built in a little different direction. That's part of the problem. Yeah, well, he hit the crosswind as he was coming in, as he was landing. Now, an experienced pilot would know to just gun it and take back off again and then come around and try it again, right? He didn't uh-huh. know that. So he just tried to land the plane, and the plane got pushed off the runway onto a side runway, and then almost a couple of feet from a building that was there and then <laughs> then stopped because it hit a ditch 
And uh, I'm sitting there, and I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me. And then I'm thinking, I'm not even going to try to move because I may find I can't. You know, you don't know what happened to you. So I opened the door to the plane, which was to the side of me. I unbuckled my seatbelt, and I turned around, I got out of the plane, and I was fine. And so was he. We Both of us had bruises on our arms and things like that. But we had survived, literally, that's surviving a pl- pr- plane crash, isn't it? Mm-hmm, yeah. So I was thinking after that of renting myself out to people who were afraid of flying and going on long trips with them in airplanes because what are the chances I'd be in two plane crashes? So I'd be your guarantee yeah. against a plane <laughs> crash. Who's the uh, author of William Michener? Uh, James Michener. He, James, he survived three plane crashes. Really? Yeah. Really? So well, that's got to be a record. Yeah, but you know, I mean, but and I got to tell you, the one, I, I just uh, that's amazing. I, I, was I, he? Was anybody screaming during the exodus? No, there was no screaming. We were just. So he was calm. I don't know if he was calm. I don't know what was going on inside of him because he just got us into a plane wreck, okay? Um, but you, you knew something wasn't yeah, right. Yeah, but he got out of the plane, too, and people came running to the plane, of course, to see if we were okay. And I was okay, and he was okay. We had some, as I say, some bruises. I went home. The next day, I woke up. Every bone in my body ached because I'd become this giant, uh, uh, what do you call it, uh, cushion. And, and I had survived the crash, but every bone in my body was aching because I was using every muscle in my body to, you know, push against this crash. So that was how I remember it. But I, and I, and I said, you know, I, I'm sorry, I'm never going out with you on a plane again. He says, I don't know if, I don't know if I'm ever taking one up ever again. And this was his first solo flight without a, you know, an instructor or anything. Did he uh, fly after that? No, no, never flew again. Really? Wow. Never flew again. Well, you know, I, I would imagine I would feel the same way if I had gone, gotten a pilot's license, gone up, and all of a sudden the first thing that happens when I'm alone is a plane crash. I mean, <laughs> that is kind of an omen. <laughs> it is an omen, like, don't do this again. You know. Jesus God. It's kind, it's kind of like you know what's happened to me. I, I I you know I went out a couple of weeks ago. I I had this just terrible fall. I tripped and fell, and, uh, and I've done that a couple of times. Do you have you ever trip and fall at your age? Yeah, sometimes when I'm running. Yeah. Yeah. How bad is it? It's it's a, it's a horrible feeling. You're wor- you're worried you're gonna break something and uh, just falls it. Well, our age can be deadly. Well, I mean, this has been quite debilitating to me. Um, but um, but the thing that, is, that really worries me more than anything else is I'm afraid to go out for a walk. I'm afraid I'll fall. Yeah, well, that's, then, you, then you break a hip. and Well, it, 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 I have pretty resilient bones. I mean, the falls that I've taken... I could have, if Marjorie's taken falls and broken knees, hands, whatever, you know, as a result. Me, I, my bones are pretty strong all the way around. But I get this fear of just taking a walk. Sometimes I'll take a cane with me, not because I need it, but because I want it in case I fall. You know, that I'll, I'll have something uh-huh. to at least break the fall. Uh, but uh, lately I haven't been going out with it, but I'm afraid to go out for a walk. It doesn't, I used to love walking, you know. And do you know what caused your fall? Yes, tripping, basically. But usually sometimes like a, a broke break in the sidewalk. Well, you know, the, the sidewalks in New York are literally, every one of them is trying to kill you, you know, because it, up and down, a little cracks in the thing, and, and all you got to do is hit one of those, and if you don't have the balance yeah. you once had, which is my case because I have neuropathy, you you fall. 
Now, you then try to break the fall, and I, you know, in one case, my, my knee went sideways, and that was the biggest problem. Then I had big, two big bruises on my, on my other leg where they, I'd been wearing shorts. If I hadn't been wearing shorts, it probably wouldn't have been as terrible. But it, 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 they scraped across the pavement and took, it still, I still have marks there, you know. So it was not fun. And it, it kind of like really t- turned me off to walking, you know. Well, definitely scare you from it, sure. I mean, when I run in a fall, it's just I'm r- afraid to run for the next few weeks. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you fall that often? It's usually about once a year, and it's always a, you always throw your hand out so your hand gets scraped, and then, uh, like, and then it all hits your knee. Always, you always get burned in the same place. And what, and, and what happens? You usually trip over a bump in the road or something like yeah, that? Yeah, exactly, or a tree root or something. Yeah, yeah. But uh, And you enjoy running. You, that's really a regular thing with you. Yeah, it keeps the weight off, so it's good. And they also say that it's, uh, it's probably walking briskly or running are the two best exercises you can have. Uh, walking is probably the best because it does less uh, pounding to your system. So yeah, if you if you can walk, that's a great thing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Wow. Like Harry Truman and uh, Bob Hope would take a walk, an hour walk at four in the morning, no matter where he was, any city. No matter where he was. He said he'd walk in the most dangerous neighborhood an hour at four in the morning. Oh really? Yeah, and he lived to be a hundred. So. Oh okay. And Truman was into his 90s. So. And Truman jogged? Always went for a long walk every long day. Long walk. Well, walk, walking's fine. Yeah, walking's the best. You know, it's it's quite, it's, they're all very good for you. I also heard that swimming is probably great. It's a great low-impact exercise. Yeah. Uh, and I used to love swimming. You know, I can't tell you the last time I've gone swimming. And I, but I know I still know how to swim. I'm not, not worried about that. You know what worries me is that I don't know how to drive anymore. It's been so long since I've driven a car. When uh, was the last time? I would I would say five, six, maybe seven years ago. When we went up to Burlington, Vermont, and I rented a car. Well, you wouldn't uh, you wouldn't forget, would you? Well, I don't know if I would forget. I I'm worried about two things. Okay, I'm worried about the fact that maybe I have forgotten. And of course, you got all these new gadgets in the cars. You know, I mean, I, I understand that there isn't a car being made today that doesn't have a push button to start it. <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm used to sticking a key in the steering wheel, uh, steering column. And turning a key and having the ignition go. So that's for for beginners. Then you've got this whole panel of lights and everything going off with GPS, which I I had a GPS in my car, uh, you know. But it was an early GPS. But uh, you know, so you've got all this all this gadgetry. So I don't know how I would feel with all that gadgetry, if I would feel comfortable with it. Um, I would have, you know, 20 years ago, but because I could adapt to new stuff much easier than I can today. Um, so, I, you know, I mean, I, I, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 this is all about getting old. I, I'm tired. I, we shouldn't talk about it. What's, what, what did you do for Thanksgiving? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, we... we oh exercise that little thing but did you go i had my i i have a good thanksgiving memory is uh uh, my favorite thanksgiving was uh 71 was db cooper wait a minute about him wait a minute you had you had thanksgiving with db cooper (laughs) no i just think of him because i thought that was a great because he did that uh he jumped out of a hijacking on thanksgiving of 71 oh was that it Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. I'm 71. But otherwise... Brilliant, brilliant plan he had, so... So that was your favorite Thanksgiving, was it? Yeah, remembering D.B. Cooper. 
who they never found. They never found him. Uh, everybody. They did find some of the money. Did they find some of the money? How much of the money? Some of the money washed up in the Columbia River, yeah. Oh, really? Well, he jumped out of the plane with the bag, right? Uh-huh. Did he have a parachute? He had a parachute. Okay, so he had a parachute. So chances are he could be alive today. They never found him. No, although he did jump out in the middle of nowhere in the in the night. It was pretty... Uh, yeah, but he still I think could... They, the FBI was going to send him a bad parachute, and then he sent him a note saying, I'm taking, I'm taking a stewardess with me. You better send two good ones. Oh, okay. Did he take a stewardess with him? No. Uh, no, but he, he tricked him by saying that. Oh, okay. But they were going to give him a parachute with a hole in it or something, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. That's it. That's a sweet idea. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, the guy only robbed a bank. He didn't kill somebody. All right, so you're trying to kill him? Mm-hmm. What, over money? Yeah, that doesn't seem right, does it? We have no sense of proportion in how we deal with things. I mean, there's a lot of argument about what's going on in Gaza as not being a sense of proportion. I mean, when 1,200 uh, uh, Israelis are killed, and then you go out and kill over 10,000 Gazans, 4,000 of them being children. Is that disproportionate? Is that a, uh, you know? I mean, how far do you go to, to make up for it? So do you, put a, do you put a hole in a parachute of a guy who just robbed a bank? Do you want to kill him, or do you just want to get your money back and put him in prison? You yeah, because robbing a bank, you wouldn't be, you wouldn't get capital punishment. No, but why he jumped out of a plane in the middle of the night, in the middle of nowhere? Uh, you know, I see a field down there. Now I'll jump. Go. Bye. See you later. Yeah, he jumped in the northwest woods. It they never fun. found him. They never found him. Not remains. No. Nothing. Just the money, as you say, floating in the river. They found a few. They found he took a quarter million. I think they found like a couple of thousand. Uh huh. Yeah. So there you go. He jumped out the uh, the seven twenty sevens had a rear exit door, and he he had him lower that door at about ten thousand feet, and he just jumped out. Yeah, oh boy. Even jumping at ten thousand feet, it, it, don't you have trouble breathing up there? We wouldn't have trouble breathing, but I mean, in the middle of the night, I think it was raining too and windy. <laughs> just been a nightmare scenario. Why didn't you just say, take this plane to Cuba? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that seemed to be the thing people were doing back then, but this was up in the Pacific Northwest, right? Yeah, well, in uh, 1969, there was over 40 commercial hijackings in America. In 1969? 69. Yeah. There are how many? It, 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 over 40. And it was, they said it became so common it was not even front page of news. Yeah. Yeah. It, uh, you don't hear about hijackings that often now. No, they have sky marshals on board. Uh, so it'd be. It's, it's, and you can't get into the cabin. Can't get into the pilot. No, cabin's locked. Yeah. yeah. And they're also bulletproof. It used to be, you know, you could go to the bathroom, and if you opened the wrong door, you were looking into the pilot, you know. Uh, but yeah. they did away with that. They made sure you couldn't just get in that easily. Well, the night we were doing a, a breakfast with Ben at Christmas show at the Fairmont, yes. 1987. Tell him uh, I remember this. PSA uh, went up and shot the two pilots. A PSA flight went and shot. From, they San Fr from L.A. to San Francisco from L.A. to San Francisco, we brought up a whole bunch of advertisers to watch this show, kind of as a promotion for the station and to getting good with the advertisers. And we put a whole bunch of them, like, I don't know, 10 of them, on a PSA flight coming up to San Francisco. Uh, the flight we put them on went a little late. Um, they, they, let me put it this way: If they got, we put them on the plane one plane earlier, they all would have been dead. Yeah, yeah, that's how close it was. Jesus. Um, 
Yeah, it was terrible, just terrible. And but it, you know, we would have lost a lot of advertisers. Uh, and, and <laughs> you can lose a lot of things in broadcasting. You don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose. Yeah. You don't want to lose sponsors. Okay, because they died loss, yeah. because you put them on a plane that was hijacked and then crashed. But that was a Jesus. major crash, wasn't it? As I remember it, oh. I mean, they were. Oh yeah. It was. It. it you don't hear about hijackings where. Well, what do they do? They force the plane into the ground. He just went up and shot the two pilots, and it just uh, no. So the plane went out of control. Wow, wow, yeah. I, but I remember that. I remember. Yeah, that. it was a sad I, story. There's one stewardess. It was her first flight. Oh boy. Oh well, you know. <laughs> I'm surprised Bill Mann wasn't the pilot. <laughs> and she could have lived to be my age, and then say to herself, yeah. what, what was what was that all about?" You know, come on, you know. I mean. Why Why have I gained all this ability? Well, I don't know. I don't have that great amount of ability. But, you know, it took me a certain amount of craft to be able to do what I do, right? Yeah. Why did I learn all that? In the end, it's not going to mean anything. You know. Well, some people, few people will remember me lovingly. They will look at their newspaper. Oh, guess who died? <laughs> Alex Ben, remember when we used to listen to him? Yeah, I really liked his show. He was pretty good. Oh, I'm so sorry he died. That that's about as far as it's gonna go. And with you, it's gonna be. You know what I did? I was watching um, uh, uh, old Letterman stuff, and they had uh, Rodney Dangerfield doing top ten things or something that he would like to be able to do. And he, one of them was um, have sex and then leave immediately. <laughs> and I looked over at Marjorie. I said, Bub's line is better. Tell them the, Sneak, tell them the Sneaking out without pain. Sneaking. Yeah. You're, one of your favorite things is having sex and sneaking <laughs> out without pain. I, I would have given that joke to Rodney. Yeah. It, it is better, right? It, it, it's better than his joke. Yeah. Yeah. And, and can you imagine... Rodney delivering your line that'd be the, the lifetime thrill that'd be a high point yeah have any has anybody ever heard a joke in your act and then bought it from you uh i think i i think i did sell a couple back in the day but i can't remember what they were because you write a lot of one liners one liners which are People don't. If people don't buy one-liners they just steal them i think <laughs> most later yeah because nothing I'm, you can do about it well, I was mentioning to Marjorie that you know being a one-liner comedian is 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 not a, a hard a diff, it's not a, a particularly is it a difficult task being a one-line comic like you are? Is it Just hard? Uh, it's remembering all the jokes is hard, and Dangerfield said that too. Also. Yeah, but but that's that's the most of it because what happens is. Uh, the great thing about ha being a one-line comic is you can do a line, it can bomb, but there's another one coming after it. Yeah, you just keep them coming forward like gunfire. So, yeah, so uh, the audience says to themselves, well, that wasn't very good in their mind, but the next one will probably be better. And, and many, many cases, I've got a lot. In your case, it was always better. You know. Well, thanks. Well, you kind of get this rhythm going. and uh, Like Dangerfield in an hour show would do... Uh, close to 300 jokes really that's a lot to remember yeah really? well how many would do you do you do about 20 minutes right 25 minutes i do 20 so it's probably close to i do i i would guess 80 or 90 yeah it's just you yeah, do four so, or five a minute so now what happens if you've had to you've had to headline haven't you i have yeah i don't like it yeah and that means you have to do an hour right at least 45, yeah. At least 45. So what do you do when you have to do 45? Do you have enough material for 45 minutes? Not one-liner, so then I had to break it up and do maybe some longer stories, which kind of destroys the rhythm, which doesn't... Because that's not the nature of your act. The nature of your no. act is one line after another. Yeah. You know? Yeah, but uh, but uh, because you... you I, I remembered you. I said to Marjorie, I said... It, the only you know you're 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 a one line comic. Uh, you got guys like Seinfeld. They're not, they're not telling one joke right after another. They're 
leading into one thing that leads into another. Right, thing. they're long, to almost stories. Yeah. Some yeah. of them. Uh, you, then, then you. I do don't think there were, there weren't many one-liner comics in San Francisco, as I recall. And and I don't think you ever do callbacks, do you? No, I should because uh, those are, those work well for callbacks. Comics. By the way, in case people don't know what we're talking about, is you're calling back to a joke you've already done. Mm-hmm. You know, and then people laugh because. You know, you're calling back. And the joke you may yeah. have done originally may not have been a great joke, but the callback is a great joke. So, yeah, whatever. But anyway, hey, listen, we've run out of time. I love talking to you, Bubs. It's flown by. I'm, yeah, I don't have any more falls, so we got to keep you healthy. Yeah, you got to keep me healthy so we can keep doing this every week. I don't know yeah. how. I have to count. Did I, I counted once how many of these we've done because I have a copy of every one of them. And uh, I think it came out to something like 250. Jesus, really? Really oh, a lot. Gosh. Yeah, I'll let you know next time. I'll do it. Okay, little, yeah, I'd like to know. I'll, ha- I'll send my research team on that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Larry Bubbles Brown. Thanks, Larry. <laughs> Bye-bye. Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network talk like you've never heard it before ah yes 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 okay Uh, i'm a little high up here uh i could lower myself but see as i sit here it gets lower and lower so what the hell hello everybody how are you good to see you how you doing yeah i'm talix right um well, yesterday I told you about we were starting a new intersection with uh, Amy Manuel, and uh, <laughs> uh, last night she had problems. Okay, so if you were frustrated by the last night, I think and I'm just uh, saying this. Oh, wait a minute, let me turn on the lamp. There we go. That looks so much better. Uh, it it uh, uh, so much of a. Uh, 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 we, we seemed to fix the problem. What it was is that she had she was doing the show. You, she'd play her theme song. You couldn't hear her play the theme song. And then you couldn't hear her talking to the panel who was on Skype, okay? Simple little deal, right, you would think, okay? But you couldn't hear her, and that was that. Let me see, where were we? There was other stuff that we needed to... Uh, uh, a deal with uh, and uh, 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 she just she couldn't uh, she uh, you could so we couldn't get it working okay so uh, I don't know it may have had something to do with the fact that there's a little company called Microsoft that has a tendency to want to keep changing things up and uh, they'll, they'll they'll like do something to upgrade your your Microsoft uh, Windows, right? And in the process, they flip switches and stuff that you've already got. You know, so it. So we finally, I figured it out. And I figured out the problem today because she was still having the same problem. Couldn't figure out why she was having it. And so I, in my in my dotage, I seem to still be able to be a problem solver of this sort. And I figured out what it was. And then she did what I told her to do, and before you know it, it's all working. So tonight, that's me crossing my fingers in case you're just listening to the audio. Um, she should be okay tonight, so uh, give it a listen, okay? <laughs> I think we're going to be okay. Plus today, I, I also did one other thing. You know, I'm, I'm losing it. I really am. I mean, I have to admit it that I'm losing it. And uh, I, I made up this new graphic for the show, right? Uh, let me see here. Do I do I have that graphic? Hold on a second. Let me let me see if I have that graphic here. Is that no? That's not it. No, is that it? There we go. That's the graphic. Okay. What what is wrong with that graphic? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Come on. Have you figured it out yet? Wednesday through Friday at 11.30 p.m. Yeah, that was uh, 11. It, me, I was supposed to say, it was supposed to say midnight. But of course, because I've lost it and I've got uh, uh, Alzheimer's or some other kind of thing where you can't remember crap, 
I put it down there at 1130 when it was really supposed to be midnight. So anyway, I, but I wanted to redo that graphic because it's really, it's a pretty ugly graphic. It, it, I just didn't like it, okay? And, and uh, the picture of her is not, does not do her justice. So I, uh, I went back and I did a new graphic, which I don't have here, but you can probably see anywhere of a number of different places. Um, at which I, uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what to, where, 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 you, where you could go to see it. Well, on gabnet.net, it's uh, kind of a squished up version of the graphic. But anyway, uh, I changed the graphic and much better looking graphic and it says midnight, okay? And everybody was getting so upset with me because they were going, what, you want your, you're, you're going to go until 11.30 every night now? You know, I went, no, no, no. That was me. I screwed up. Please excuse me. All right. But anyway, uh, that's, uh, that's uh, what's uh, going to be uh, happening uh, with, uh, with her tonight. And I, I hope, I'm keeping my fingers crossed it's going to work okay. I, I do want to thank her regulars for sticking around last night. And some of them were falling asleep and just just seeing her through all of this. And that's loyalty, and I really appreciate it. And you were a great help last night. But we'll, uh, we'll uh, uh, discuss that a little bit later for, with people. Uh, but uh, let me see here. I got a... There we go. Okay, who's waiting to go? Oh, look, we got... Uh, we got... Uh, oh, a couple of good people waiting uh, outside of that... Uh, uh, nobody, but uh, anyway, let's admit them here, and I will uh, go to the, uh, um, there they are coming into view now, as we are uh, want to do. Uh, there's, uh, Brian Neary is in the dark, and what you see going by him are lights. Are you on your way home, Brian? Yeah, yeah, I just left uh, about 30 minutes ago, so... Yeah. So right when I get home, it'll be nine o'clock, so it's perfect timing. Oh, I see. Okay, nine o'clock, which would be midnight uh, our time here. Okay. Yeah. 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 I just left load. I had uh, my last presentation at six thirty and seven, and then on the way home. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you uh, for joining us tonight. In spite of the fact that we're just hardly going to see you tonight, you know. Unless you go through some major metropolitan area, in which case you'll be shining up like crazy. But no, yeah. And uh, there's Josh. Hello, Josh. How are you? I'm very good. How are you? Yeah. And that's the uh, entire list of people that we have here tonight. You know, this has been a very funny week. Uh, the listenership is down precipitously. And is there anything going on, like sports-wise, I should know about? You know. Nothing in particular. Kevin had to travel today, and he was going to be back, but he got in some really heavy traffic. Yeah, yeah. In the Sacramento area, and he was going to take him along. He's probably just now getting home. Hmm. Okay. Based on what he was saying, so he was saying by the time he got home and unloaded and everything, he would miss it. But well, we were we were looking good for tomorrow. But yeah, yeah. So I know that's what was up with Kevin. Yeah. Patrick. He's just a scared little bitch to come on here, so he won't come on. So, <laughs> what, what, what is he scared about coming on here? I mean, oh, I'm, I'm just kidding him. But oh. um, I actually don't know what he's doing tonight. But yeah, because, but I don't know about everybody else. Those are the only ones I can testify for. Because we all get together, you, I, Patrick, and uh, Kevin, uh, on the weekends, and do a little Zoom with each other. Uh, and uh, then I then I I, I I weasel out about an hour in because I'm I'm a tired old man. Okay, uh, I'll use my age as the excuse, and then they can continue to go on uh, talking to each other. And when I leave, they immediately start talking about sports. You know, well because you know that if I'm there, I'm not going to join in on sports. <laughs> Although, why don't we try some week? You can, we can start off with a sports discussion. No problem. Huh? No problem. Yeah, and I will somehow try to join in with all mm -hmm. the expertise that I have as sports Emmy Award winning Alex Bennett. Works for me. Yeah. But yeah. I'm here tonight because I don't believe in excuses, you know. Yeah, that's right. When that's you work right. for GabNet, 
You yeah. work for GabNet. Yeah. Your yeah. attendance policy is very strict. <laughs> yes. You you meet, miss two meetings. That's it for you, pal. It's in the, it's in the employee handbook. Yeah. Read it. Well, Brian, you know, does this out of the real goodness of his heart because he's driving right now. But then again, he has nothing to do, right? When you're in the car, you really have nothing to do. I know. that This will make the time go by quick. Yeah. Yeah, it'll help. And, so. la and last night I got rid of a hooker for you guys, just to be on. Yeah, I know. I know you were staying in a hotel overnight down in, uh, where were you? Where's your the company? In Lodi. In Lodi. 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 And you live yeah. in where? San Jose. San Jose. Oh, okay. About, about an, hour, uh, an hour and a half drive. About an hour and a half drive? Oh, okay. Yeah. So uh, it, that's quite a drive for you. How many days a week do you do that drive? Uh, three days a week. Oh, three days a week. Wow. Cause I, yeah. used to, I used to work for a company in Sacramento, California, after I was through with uh, uh, at uh, Live 105. Um, I went to work for my friend up in Sacramento at Play Incorporated. And I, I told him, well, I can't do this every day, but I agreed to do it three days a week like you. And driving huh? 90 miles up and 90 miles back, which is, you know, uh, what, 180 miles, every mm -hmm. uh, three days a week gets to be a little daunting, you know. Yeah, mine's 97 miles. So, yeah, it's about the same. Yeah, same round trip. And it, it kind of gets a little daunting. You know, I don't know about you. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah, and I'm against traffic. So when I drive in the morning, it's like a parking lot going into san jose area mm -hmm. so it's against traffic but still it's long but you know i always have something to listen to so no in all those not, i have yeah. some podcasts in, or in all those trips have you ever gotten a traffic ticket no no okay no you know because i've not... seen i've seen some crashes happen around me near me and just in front of me yeah but that's just because you're a lousy driver and they're trying to avoid you and then they <laughs> yeah i can I caused it. <laughs> I, you know, I had a, a real, I, I was, a, you know, um, what was I going to say now? I forgot completely. I was going in some direction and then I forgot where I was going. Hi, folks. Something about traffic. I'm going to be, I'm going to be 84. That's the excuse. Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Am I too old to be on, on a program like this? Should I just pack it in at 84? No. Say goodbye, everybody. Well, Adios, you know. I don't think so. No. Because I was telling, uh, I was telling uh, Amy today when I was talking to her about all this oh. stuff and trying to fix no. things. I said, uh, you know, I just hope that I am, I, I'm, I'm dignified enough to know when I should exit the stage. Yeah. You know, because some but people. You're not there. I, I know. Some people are. You know what it is, though? You don't know when people are there too long. And I'll tell you why. We were discussing this, too. That, for instance, Tony Bennett had Alzheimer's, mm -hmm. full-on Alzheimer's, okay? You know, to the point where he couldn't remember certain members of his family, things like that. That kind of Alzheimer's. Mm -hmm. The minute you started playing a song on the piano, he sang any lyric you threw in front of him. <laughs> you know? So he could get up on stage. He could do a whole concert, all right? And then go off the stage and not even know where he was. I mean, that... that so, so somehow we were talking about there's this. How can we, how can we put it? Uh, a, uh, um, a thing that happens where you kind of go in on remote control, you know, because you've been doing this all your life, and so you know how to still do it. You know, I think I, I probably still know how to do this to a certain extent, not as creatively as I once did. Yeah, I saw. Huh? I mean, I know he just passed, but. I saw an interview maybe about six months ago with Norman Lear on the CBS Sunday morning news. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he was 100 at the time. And, I mean, he was completely... I mean, he sat for an interview. Well, you know? he so, I mean, he was unusual in that fashion. I well, mean, yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, but, but yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, he was... I mean, at, hun at 100, if I'm still alive, come to me and see me, you'll find a doddering old fool. You know. Yeah, uh, I mean, actually, Kissinger was doing regular speeches and interviews right up until about a year or so ago. 
at 98 and 99. I mean, and some people talked, he was always hard to understand. So yeah. his age didn't really, that didn't have anything to do with it. He was always a little mumbly or what, you know, whatever. But, but he was, yeah, he was still doing television interviews and meeting with people and he still gave uh, talks and things yeah. like that. So, I mean, you know, there are people that, yeah. Keep it all the way till the end, really. You know, yeah. I mean, a Jimmy Carter. I mean, I know he's in really, really bad shape now, but we, even, well, listen. Think five years ago when he was in his 90s. He, he has still. a terminal disease, Jimmy Carter. It's called aging. Yeah. I mean, right. you know, and yeah. the fact that he's going to be 100. Yeah, right. You but know. I mean, but just, just maybe five years ago, you could have done an interview with him and mm -hmm. he. He could do it. Did you see that picture, though, yeah. when yeah. Obama and, and Michelle went to visit them? Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe so. Yeah. yeah. And, and the picture is Obama and it's Michelle. And there's the two of them sitting in a chair, and they look like like five-inch tall dolls, you know? They look like two, like two oh. dolls sitting there. Mm -hmm. But they, she was really yeah. old. You know, she was 96. Yeah, right, right. And I'm yeah. sure he's oh, yeah. I'm sure he's going any day now because when you have a yeah. marriage that long and all of he a sudden He did look um in the one picture that they put out from the funeral uh, cuz I check in on the Carter Center uh and library a lot on social media um cuz I follow almost all of them. And I I did see the picture, and he I mean he does look really bad. Well, he's he's a hundred, okay. Well, right, that's my point. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. I mean, I mean, he just, but I mean, but I'm saying I'm feel... saying the reason he's going to wind up dying, okay, plain very simple why he's going to die, uh, is because she died. You yeah, know, they were together. It's a thing. How many years they 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 started Seven, dating in high school? Six or something. Yeah, it's an amazing amount yeah. of time. All right, yeah. And when you suddenly lose a mate after that time, then the other partner dies very soon after that. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's pretty common. It's happened in my family. Um, I mean, if it happened to me with Marjorie, I'd go on living for another twenty years. But anyway, thank you very much, folks. That was a joke. Don't tell her I said it. Okay. But he, uh, you know, like I said, even as even just five years ago, though, when he was in his mid nineties, he was still doing interviews i mean he wrote three or four books in in the decade that he was in his 80s mm -hmm. i believe yeah after after the age of 75 for sure i have one of those books autographed yeah. by him because yeah, I, I, mean, I i interviewed him yeah that'd be a great thing i mean he probably had two or three at least so in fact there are two times that i had him on my show once in san francisco and it was by phone and he it was my birthday and he wished me a happy birthday <laughs> Somebody apparently told him it was my birthday, and he wished me a happy birthday, and I felt very privileged that the president of the United States, yeah. former president of the United States, had wished me a happy birthday. And yeah. then he came to Sirius, and they decided they would let me do the interview, one of the few times they'd let me do an interview of that sort, um, because I, you know, they didn't, never understood me. At, they, they never understood me there. They never understood me at other radio stations. But yeah. anyway, I interviewed him, and I just uh, said, you know, I, this is the first time I've ever interviewed a, in person, a former president of the United States, and it's just wonderful to refer to somebody not by their name but by Mr. President. Yeah. You know, I said, would you like me to do that? And he said, if you'd like. You know, very nice man, just a wonderful man. Yeah, I mean, from uh, from all accounts, and you know, I know a fair amount about this. Mm -hmm. um, like his term in office or his politics or not, setting it aside, he's probably one of the most genuine people that's ever been. Somebody once referred our, to him as the our, best our, ex, the best ex president know. there ever was. Well, he did. He certainly did himself well after his term, for sure. Yeah. You know, but I mean, regardless of whether or not you think that his term was successful, and and you know, let's face it, it it wasn't. You know, okay. A, a, first round draft pick term or anything I mean, that's that's fair but he was one of the most if you know genuine people and nice people and i tell you what i think he's one of the few politicians 
certainly presidents, but one of the few politicians that ever served that went around during the campaign, or it was well known that he was a a a professed and practicing Christian who actually was a professed and practicing Christian. Right. And I right. happen to know that a, a lot, a decent amount about that. I mean, I mean, I think a lot of them say it well, because I, I, they're I, expected I, to or whatever. But I, he, I know that he was. I often uh, said the best line ever I ever heard from an ex uh, first lady was Rosalind Carter. She was being interviewed by somebody, some mm -hmm. religious radio station, I think, or something like that. Yeah. And uh, the person who was interviewing her at one point said, "By the way." Have you been born again? Yeah. And she said, "No, I got it right the first time." <laughs> yeah. yeah, they were pretty good. I mean, you know, and 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 again, kind of like with this politics. If even if you think that you know the religion stuff is hogwash or whatever, okay, fine, fair enough. But as far as it went, I I, I truly think that he's one of the only ones. Who didn't just say it? I think that he, he I know that he practiced it. Yeah. In, oh, absolutely. You know, and, I, and I remember, I read the Reverend Billy Graham's autobiography. I don't know, ten years ago or whatever, and he had a chapter in there on each president, and he basically said that he was the most genuine Christian man that he had ever met in politics. You know, even though he did not care for his politics, he just said, "I'm just talking about." his his life as a as a christian you know he he just he was it's, very it's amazing that you have to say that yeah. because you know it's really yeah, it it's really by the way where is everybody tonight there are not any people yeah. listening for the there are some but not a lot and uh you know not a lot of callers so and and uh i don't know i don't care i just do this because i enjoy talking to you guys but no uh, the fact was that that he was genuine, and yeah. he was truly religious. And what I was going to say is, you know, it's not too hard to be a Christian. All you got to do is go to church once a week and be nice to everybody. Is that too hard? You know, is that yeah. too difficult? I mean, the most difficult part is having to, you know, find the right church where you're not getting bored by the guy giving the sermon. But outside <laughs> yeah. of that, you know, outside of that shopping around, uh, it's pretty easy to be a Christian. It's even easier to be a Jew, by the way, I might add. <laughs> Unless, of course, you live in Israel, uh, but it, it's uh, easy yeah, to be easier you, to easier to be. A, that, well, wait a minute! It's easier to be a Jew because there's really nothing you have to do. You don't have to go to church. You don't have to do anything like that. You know. So, well, here comes Tony. Here comes Tony. But yeah, he was. Hey, up pretty, seemed, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Brian. I forgot. Go ahead. Brian. Oh no, no. No, I was just gonna say I had my hand raised, but maybe you didn't see. Yes. Hello. Yeah. Um, so I think all the all the stuff that I remember him as ex president is you know working with you know, the the humanity you know uh, the, the what habit, you habitat for the humanity habitat for humanity and and that's you know all of a sudden he'd pop up and he'd be you know building houses and, and doing all that stuff you know it something seems like of of yeah. ex presidents he's like one of the ones that really you know say hey I'm done with pre being president but I still want to do something good for my country. Well, you know something? I, I got to tell you, he actually made Habitat for the Humanities. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, he used to go and build those houses and stuff, but they would report on him doing it, and that's when most of the public heard about Habitat for the Humanities, which is you yeah, know, a, he, just an absolutely was, wonderful organization. He was, and like a lot of people's grandparents of that age or whatever, he was also actually a pretty talented woodworker. Yeah, uh, he built a lot of chests and cabinets and coffee tables and things because he liked to do it. And I watched this interview a few weeks ago where he was saying, you know, he made a, a thing or two. This is, you know, 20 years ago or so. And somebody said, mm -hmm. you know, you could auction that off and get a lot of money for it because you made it, you know. And he, he said, you know, and I thought that was the dumbest thing ever. You know, who would want to buy something I made? You know, I'm just me or whatever. And they said, well, you know, you could you you could get a lot of money for that, and you know, give it to one of your charities. And then he thought, well, you know, <laughs> yeah. 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 okay, you know, I guess that makes some sense. And he made some chests and things that went to auction and sold for you know like ten thousand dollars, because he would make it, and then he would 
he would scribe his name on the inside of it somewhere, you know. Mm-hmm. It was authenticated, and 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 he uh, he raised hundreds of thousands of dollars making. No, he uh, you know, like but he he walked the walk, you know. Talk, yeah, he didn't just talk the talk, you know, and that's that's terrific. It's just yeah, and terrific. I mean, even for people that if you didn't you know politically agree with him or whatever, I mean, at least yeah. you know you. I don't know, had some belief that he was at least working for America, whether you thought all the policies were good or not. I mean, I think that's obviously where we well, got to with Trump, is we all just think he's a fraud, he, you know? He, he wasn't a, 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 a great president, okay? Well, yeah. But what a, he was a great human being, yeah, and right. that's what was incredible about him. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I think that, and I don't know how involved he'll get, but I think that, you know, in 20 or 30 years, mm-hmm. I think many people will look back and at least say, well, you know, Obama was a pretty decent human being, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, he was no drama Obama, right? You know what I mean? You know, especially with what we've had to live through the last four or five, six years, you know? I mean, it's, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, he didn't... Uh, he didn't completely do something every day that you made you roll your eyes, you know. I mean, so I mean, it is. It is isn't it, isn't it amazing that we're sitting here it? talking by a, uh, about a man who was a really decent human being, and as a president, respected the job he had to do. Maybe he didn't do it well. There, there are some questions about his abilities, uh, but nevertheless. Uh, we're talking about this guy like this, and look at what we had as a president in Trump. I mean, it's just a shame that we can't have another person like that in office. You know, I agree. And mm-hmm. and uh, I um, I really fear for this country, and I'm going to tell you why I fear for this country. The recent statements by Donald Trump are just scary. Yeah. You know, it's They're scary. just basically spooky. Uh, you know, uh, I'm uh, I'm going to be a dictator on day one. Uh, I'm not going to do it on day two. Listen, there's never been a dictator in history who was a dictator from day one who didn't suddenly decide on day two. I think I still want to be a dictator. Yeah, I like you. You know, can what? I ask you a question, Alex? To you too, and, and everybody there. That's uh, that's Tony, by the way. We've been joined by Jeff, and we've been joined by Alan. Hello, all. Hmm. Yeah, you know, you know what I don't get, guys. Even you know, I was going to actually, Alex. Me and my brother were talking about it. We can't get over the cult of personality that is Trump. How is it possible with all these debates? None of them are just other than Christie saying, "Hey, listen, he's got to be here." Yeah, there, well, it's like there's no rules for anything. Well, I uh, I'll tell you about Christie. Uh, I I read it today. I've got to go find it. But supposedly in this week's debate, which I didn't watch, they said he did. Something like uh, ten of the best minutes any yeah. person oh, has ever done in a debate. Yeah. What what are they ref- uh, what are they referring to, Brian? Did you watch it? Yeah, I think like I said last night, there were he just kept challenging everybody, you know, from answering questions and not not answering questions when they're easy, simple questions that they're asking, uh, routing around everything. You know, DeSantis talking about his military background instead of just saying, are you going to bring troops to, you know, uh, uh, Ukraine or not? Um, and then him going after the other guy, you know, Ramaswamy, yeah. Is. Yeah, going yeah. after him, you know, saying, well, that's what you do at these, these debates. You, you see all these things away from here, then you come here and you change your, your view, and then you say, I never said that. He was just, he was leaning into everybody. It was awesome. Yeah. Did you watch it at all, uh, um, uh, Josh? No, I did not. Yeah, see, I've got to go back and see if I can find it because they say they say that Christie uh, was one of the finest, something like five minutes or something that mm-hmm. any anybody has ever done in a debate. Yeah, I mean, I I heard some clips and some. He's sharp on both. Uh, he is sharp. Yeah, yeah, he is sharp when he talks. Yeah, you know, and uh, he's a. But they'll never uh, vote for him. You know why? They've never voted for a guy that fat since Taft. Yeah. yeah. yeah I mean, I like him, really. <laughs> huh? Yeah, I heard some analysis on it. You know, some of what he said. So I'm familiar with 
some of it. And they have him on Morning Joe, you know. Why this guy doesn't gain some kind of traction because he's ballsy is beyond me. But, you know. Is that a New York thing? Or you think New York or Jersey doesn't translate to the whole country? Is it, is it added? I think he's being honest, really, to this degree. And they just don't like it. Well, I'd like to say New York doesn't translate right. into the presidency. But then again, Trump was from New York. Good point. But Trump, yeah, exactly. but Trump is not a typical a New Yorker. Okay. No, he hasn't shot anybody yet. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean I. Yeah. You know, I, mean, I would assume that the issue with Christie and the polls is just that there's not that the minds of people are made up, you know, for Trump. That there's not really people looking for someone to vote for. They already know who they're going to vote for. You know, it's just going to be a matter of who goes and actually votes. You yeah. Know? So, I mean, I I mean to me, I don't I don't know that there's that many registered Republicans who felt the need to tune into those debates because they said, I don't know yet who I want the nominee to our party be. I mean, well, I, if you I, asked, if you asked most Republicans who they want yeah. to want as their standard bearer, right. uh, neither people from either party want the ones who look like they're going to be the people who are going to be the standard bearers. Yeah. You know, I mean, they, uh, the Republicans, uh, while they will vote for Trump because they're Republicans, don't really want Trump to run, and Democrats now really don't want Biden to run. Not because Biden's done a lousy job. Bless him, I think he's done a better job than anybody wants to give him credit mm -hmm. for. Uh, all the metrics are good where Biden is concerned, but the public doesn't perceive that. You know, to, so far as the public's concerned, like I went out to uh, the grocery store the other day, and I, you know, I go there occasionally. I, I never pay attention to prices at a grocery store. Oh, I just I buy what I got to get, and I leave. Right? Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, Marjorie's going. Have you seen the price of this chicken? It was like one of these roasters, mm -hmm. and I looked at it, and it was like twenty-five bucks. And I remember That's when I used to buy those things for ten bucks, mm -hmm. and that wasn't too long ago. Okay, it's mm -hmm. not like. I'm talking about when I was a teenager, you know? So, right. I mean, uh, I, I look at that and I go, geez almighty, you know? That's yeah. really something. Uh, and, and, and when that happens, people blame that on the president. It's not the president's fault, but they blame it on the president. You know, they bl blame it on greedy grocers who are charging higher prices because everybody says, Prices have gone up on everything, so they raise the prices on everything. Am I right, Josh? Well, I, you know? yeah, I mean, e economics to me is oftentimes a fixed game, you know. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, I, I mean, I've never really believed that, you know, gas prices need to be where they were because the the supply and the demand are horseshit. <laughs> well, everybody that is... way because they know yeah. that you don't have a choice but to buy it, okay? You know. But everybody is raising prices on everything because they say, well, the economy is, you know, prices are going mm -hmm. up on everything. So everybody's raising their prices. The one that's getting me now are all these, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it, uh, uh, online services like Netflix and so on yeah. and so forth. All of them are raising their prices. Yeah, and you're going, you. why? You know, you've got... What what uh, I think it was Disney's got something like 110 million subscribers. You can't make money off that ten dollars a month that you're getting from everybody. Yeah. Come on, give me a break. If you can't, you got a problem. And plus, you're making the movies for the most part. So they go to the theaters. You make the money off the movies, and then you put them on Disney Plus. What's the expense? You know, but the same thing's true of um, uh, who was it? Well, um, uh, uh, Apple TV raised their prices two dollars. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, then we got uh, mm -hmm. oh, you got Max, which I get for free because I get AT and T. But Max raised their rates to where? Well, here's how they raise their rates. I like it with no commercials. Okay, so I pay for the no commercials. Well, I pay fifteen. I would pay fifteen ninety nine a month for no commercials on Max if I were paying for it. Mm -hmm. But I don't get 
You ready for this? I don't get 4K for that. Mm. You have to pay almost $20 to get the 4K. I mean, they're just raising the rates everywhere. Yeah. Everybody's saying, oh, I'm so mm. poor and we're going to go broke if we don't raise prices. N you know, Netflix, for crying out loud. I canceled Netflix for a couple of months. Netflix has 220 million subscribers. And if you can't make money off of, and that's in, I think, in, I think that's in the United States alone. If you can't make money out of that, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm not feeling sorry for you. Well, and part of it is that uh, some of these companies got themselves on the stock market now, and they ruin everything, you know, because they can make a lot of money. Yeah. But you know, in stock market terms, if I, if you say next quarter we're going to make ten dollars. And then when the quarter's over, you only made nine dollars. Everybody goes, "Oh, the earnings were down. That's so sad." You know, "Whoa, it was me." And then they freak out, right? You know, I mean, the big thing when I worked at Sherwin Williams was, "Oh my God, it's the end of the year, and we are going to make too much money. We're going to overshoot <laughs> the earnings." They didn't think and about then next the, year. They're yeah. going to expect more. Go spend money. Spend. Just go buy things. And, and cut our profits. Yeah, but if you were making that much money, did they think about lowering the price of paint? Fuck and no. passing it on to the consumer? <laughs> I know. They just go buy things. They yeah. said, go spend capital money on anything that you can get between now and the end of the year. Mm. Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. it, was, it, was, it was... Well, I mean, yeah, the thing... What, is, what, what were you, you going to say, Brian? No, I'm just saying one of the problems that... I'm talking to associates with in, in Lodi, mm -hmm. where you know Lodi is half of half of everything. You know, we buy everything cheaper in Lodi, Central Valley, and they're asking for cost of living adjustments because some of the people that I've been interviewing lately gave some feedback. These guys are starting to, you know, e even even in an economy like Lodi, they're having a hard time to survive. And I'm like. Wow, you know, it, it, that that area is very inexpensive to live, and you still have people there yeah. that are working for me that are struggling. But the, really, really the hard. economy is on an uptick. Okay, uh, it, it's been it's better. The cost of things should be going down, but they're not going to go down. And I'm going to tell you why. It's like they used to do with marijuana sales mm. uh, when it was illegal. Uh, they would say there's a shortage of marijuana. Sure. And they would raise the price on the marijuana they had. And all of a sudden, about a half a year later, there was enough marijuana to go around for people to drown in. Do you think they lowered the price? They got their ideas from the marijuana sellers. Uh, you know, do you the think DLT that, that you think, I mean, that the gasoline you, is like that, you, right? You think I mean, that chicken yep. you think that chicken roaster for twenty five dollars suddenly when the economy is just booming is gonna go down to ten dollars again? They gotta set their price. No, now. They set their price. And Alex, it's funny you said that. Down. Listen to this. I met somebody for lunch. Uh, this kid who used to work with my uncle and me, and this he's married. Somebody so that wants to eat lunch with you. Yeah, he, he's a nice kid. He's a teacher, so he lives in Jersey. He got married. He gets his, and I'll meet you for pizza for lunch because he had a break from school. Mm -hmm. So he, he treated me to pizza. He got a, a regular slice with chicken on it, six fifty. What? Yeah. I don't, I see, wasn't, I don't, wasn't, pizza, wasn't pizza the thing you bought because it was the cheapest thing you could eat? Yeah. And me and him have the same name. I call him Lilanth. I said, how much was it? Six fifty. And you know what they told Wait me? Was, was using, that for the pizza the or for a yeah. slot? Was that for the pizza or a slice? Just for the, it all was, was a regular slice of pizza with some chicken on dogs a and slice. a little barbecue sauce. A slice. A slice. I almost I couldn't believe it. I was like, <laughs> what? Well, I'll tell you, we ordered last night from an Italian mm -hmm. restaurant. And we used Uber Eats, which I hate well, to you use. Did you, I never did that yet. Yeah. And How much is that? And it was, I got a little bit of pasta and a little bit of salad that Mar Marjorie and I sh uh, shared. She got herself kind of a medium-sized pizza. Just take a guess how much that cost us. Say that again. It was a medium-sized pizza and a salad? Uh, uh, and a salad. Uh, and, and that we shared, and then yeah. I got I got a uh, I got a, a a pasta dish, mushrooms and pasta. I'm going to say seventy five bucks. Yeah. Well, very good, Tony. You live in New York, right? Because that's expensive. It's actually, it was it was seventy eight dollars. Yeah, that's crazy. It's crazy here. 
That's low over the top. Yeah, yeah isn't is. that isn't that disgusting? I mean, that's, that's so we decided we're never ordering out again through Uber Eats. I mean, because they charge you like a flat rate. I think just to come to your house is like twenty. Just there's one Chinese place we have been ordering from, and they went over to Uber Eats, so we order from them. Yeah, See, I walk to get my food. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty, I mean, you would have to think that. Right what, what were you saying, uh, Josh? Just, I mean, the the sorry. Chinese one you can't be that expensive. I mean, you can buy a fucking drum of rice for you know. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. But look, none of this stuff is is like. that expensive. I will say though that if you've got a, a you know, a storefront that serves food and whatever, probably your rent mm. has gone up precipitously. Yeah, I mean, yeah, do you know right. do you know what the average rent for a one bedroom apartment is in New York City today? Oh, I'm pretty good with this. My brother's down thirty five hundred. Keep going. Holy shit! It's more than that. Four five, grand. Five thousand is the <gasps> average. Five thousand a month. I wonder what your apartment in the Lower East Side is now, Alex. I don't know. Oh, I remember when I first moved to New York sad. City, I had a very nice apartment oh, up in Riverdale. That's where Archie wow. and Veronica live. Uh, 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 very I nice, it. and it was really terrific. Uh, and it was, uh, I think, three hundred a month. I wonder what that is now. Up oh, there. oh, it's got to be, it's got to be at least five thousand. Okay. Yeah, easy because that's a nice area. Um, I mean, prices have stabilized, and some things, you know, have come back down. Some of your consume, you know, non. Food products and things, you know, like wood and certain other things, you know, like there for a while, two by fours were like seven, eight dollars. I mean, it was craziness, you know. I mean, things did come back to normal, you know, like, I mean, I bought gasoline here today for like two dollars and seventy cents. Well, that's, that's good. Which is, you know, very good. For, I mean, you know, because that's well, what uh, I said. Let me take this back. Ago. That is good in comparison to where it has been. It's sure, not good right. in comparison yes. to where it was. No. And I, you know, you know I, I remember, I think, like, Two weeks ago or something, I told you guys on a Saturday that I bought gas for like two sixty five, and I was pumping it, thinking, "Oh, that must be Joe Biden's fault too," you know. Well, that's <laughs> the part, that's what getting back to the original thing that I was going to say. Yeah, that's the reason Biden's got a really hard job coming up, because everybody perceives that oh, the reason I'm shelling out and having to pay more money for this stuff because they feel it is Joe Biden's fault, but it's not Joe Biden's fault. He has, he has, he's done everything he can as president, like, uh, you know, whatever they do over the, the economic guys and in, in raising the, the rates and this and that and so on to yeah. keep the prices down. He's done everything he can do, but there's very little a president can do to keep prices down. Yeah, I don't... Well, he could talk about it. Yeah. Huh? He, he what? He could present it to everybody and say, you know, the prices... We all know the prices and such and such is, has gone down. And uh, I'd like all the presidents of all of these companies to think about if there's an yeah. opportunity. And you know what they're going to do, Jeff? You know what they're going to do, Jeff? <laughs> they're going to laugh. They're going to keep. They're going to laugh and keep doing what they're doing because yeah, they, because again, you know, let's go back to the stock market. They want oh, right. that. Yeah. You know, they yeah. want they want to do good on the stock market. I mean, that's the deal. Is I mean, that's the problem. Is if you. If you beat your earnings, that's good, right, in a yeah. theory, but yeah. then you have to set up your next quarter based on some mm. of that, and it's going to be difficult to do it. So Let me know. ask Brian something here, because he lives in California, and I always remember California is a place where if gas was cheap everywhere else in the country, it was most expensive in California, uh, just because oh, they heap ooh. tax upon tax upon really? tax in there. How's your gas prices lately, uh because you are driving well, a gas-driven well, automobile. Yeah. So both of my cars take Supreme, mm -hmm. and well, I'm paying about five dollars a gallon. That's a lot on average right now. Yeah, yeah, but well, you, for the, you're, for so the you're super paying octane, though. You're that's cheaper. not, you know, you're paying yeah, about nine, ninety-one oct yeah. ninety-one octane. Yeah. There's a couple places that's like four sixty-five. I have my little secret places, yeah. and then there are places up to five twenty-five. Honestly, and for that, for that type of fuel in california that's less than what i thought he was going to say really? so I, I i run regular in my in my vehicle here in the bay area not mm -hmm. far from brian mm -hmm. and i'm paying about four and a half dollars a gallon wow yeah, that's fine. wow 
Well, part yeah. of the reason is in California, they have heaped tax upon tax on gas oh, prices. Absolutely. The actual price of the but, gasoline is 13 yeah. cents, but once they're through, you know, with all the uh, all the taxes and everything, it's... it's but, all... but Newsom Newsom keeps coming back and saying, you know what, we're going to push out these taxes or we're going to cancel these taxes so it'll be cheaper, and then nothing happens. Yep. Well, you know... All, 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 yeah, that's... All the I'm saying is to anybody who's exactly. listening, don't blame Biden, but I don't think Biden's made a good case for himself out there. No, you know, not yet, right. He really hasn't. Nope. Um, he, just, he just recently said that if Trump weren't running, he wouldn't be running either. What a stupid comment. Well, I think probably. it should be the opposite. If Trump is running, I would get out of the way and let somebody go in there who say, you know, tw 30 years younger than Trump, Hmm. Read Gavin Newsom, and um, he anybody uh, uh, James Carville uh, in an interview said that the and I've mentioned this before that anybody who is younger than say sixty years old who runs for president could beat Trump. You know, uh, hmm. uh, uh, just anybody. Uh, what's the guy who's the head of uh, transportation? Um, Buttigieg. Buttigieg. Let him run. He could beat Trump because he's the young. The are going okay now. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. By the way, he's done a very good job. You know, he's really been on the case. Yeah. But, but I think that that uh, uh, um, Biden should get out of the way, and he should name as his successor uh, your governor out there in California. Jeff is Newsom. Done. He's a good speaker Jeff too. Done. What? What'd you, what'd you say? I said Jeff is under 60. He could run. Yeah, Jeff? Yeah. Yeah, I'd right. I'd for you. Right. 78. How about that? 78. You look 78 at all. You look good, no, Jeff. No, you don't. You keep me I would have thought closer to 70. It's that you got more hair than I do. <laughs> yeah. By the way, we lost, uh, not a, what I don't think a great actor. Uh, Ryan. Oh, Ryan uh, O'Neill died. Love story. Yeah. Oh, what? Sad. What? What'd you say? What'd you My say? mom liked that movie, Love Story. I remember. Yeah. You know, he, uh, he, I thought it was one of the worst movies of all time. I, was it a theater? Absolutely. Or, 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 no. yeah. Love is never having to say you're sorry. Oh, that's. Then, I'm always watching that movie. Yeah. <laughs> Mia Farrow, when she was with the Beatles in India, that. said that after the Maharishi Mahesh Yogi was chasing her around <laughs> the dinner table said, love is never having to save your sorry. Hmm. Love is not having to save your sorry. Uh, okay, well. I, uh, this is the treat that I get right when I come out of the car. <laughs> <laughs> She's been watching too many is she waiting by, Does she wait by the door for you like a dog? Yeah. <laughs> no, but she hears the garage door open, so she knows I'm here. So. Yeah. Uh, and you and you got gifts for her, money, candy, what? Oh, Friday. Eh, no, hug. She, she's that's all she uh, call you, say, she, pick something she's, up on the way home. She's his daddy and she's a good daddy, so that's that's yeah. why. Was it she was it with us at, at the infamous lunch and she was good. Yeah. Well, it, she, I, I hope hopefully I'll get to meet her someday. Or yes, go or go to lunch with us. We're 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 gonna do New York for sure coming up. Yeah, right. Well, what I to was told it was lunch between you and Steve Fox, right? And then somehow you thought to invite a few yeah, other people. Yeah, yeah. Well, Steve and I kept talking. Said so we got to meet up to show, yeah. you know, to check out each other's cars, and then, and then we decided this day, and then yeah, it's just today. So, hey, see if Bill and Alan want to go. So, yeah. yeah. Oh, there she is. Yeah. There she is. Uh, she has a Christmas oh. recital tomorrow. Well, the Christmas I heard recital. the story different. I heard the story that Phil invited everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Funny. That's Funny not the case. Thing. That's not the case at all. Well, he's not here to defend himself. He won't call, so won't screw him. Well, yeah. I mean, he's welcome <laughs> to call. Although, at the present time, I can't stand him. Oh. You know? Did you fix, I'm sorry, did you fix the uh, thing with Amy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I mentioned at the beginning of the show. I I got online with her today. She thought she had it solved, then she didn't. And I finally I found out what was wrong. 
good. And it was just, you know, it's always something that you didn't switch one way or another, or that got switched because yeah. Skype all of a sudden decided to change everything on your computer, you know. Worse. But it, it, you should have a, uh, there should be a show tonight. Okay, uh, good, thank with, you. With, uh, with Amy. It, is Amy smart enough to do Zoom? Uh, we, no, we've talked about she. Uh, she has Zoom, uh, mm -hmm. but we have talked. Yes, we talked sure. about it, and and uh, she's not that. She's she she kind of is okay with Skype, you know. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but if she wants to do Zoom, we'll work that one out with her, you know. And she also knows she can put that up on her on her <laughs> um, Facebook page and stuff like that, you yep. know. So. Go upstairs. Yeah. Bye. 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 <laughs> she, she, she's annoying me. And then she goes, can I go upstairs? I said, yes, bye. <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> oh, boy. That, she's, a, she's a great kid, you know? How did she annoy you? She was so good at lunch that day and everything. Very easily. <laughs> 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 now, she's, you know, she has her, her recital tomorrow, so she's getting antsy and dancing all around and, and stuff like that. So what, is, what, what are they, what are they doing? Are they doing a Christmas? Yeah. Christmas. So they have uh, everybody from the little toddler girls and then the, you know, the different, the different age ages and they each do a couple of songs out there. So it's good. So they've been rehearsing for a while. Yeah. Uh, somebody named Stanley here who I've never seen in our uh, uh, chat bot room before said, Nikki Haley could beat Joe Biden. Do you think so? I don't think so. Possibly. I don't know. She's probably the best qualified Republican. She's That's the one, the well, as I've said, yeah. she's the one Republican, though I would never vote for her because I don't like her politics particularly. Yeah, but, but she is uh, the one person that if she won, uh, I wouldn't feel bothered by. Do you feel that way, Josh? You know, I, I don't find her a big problem well i don't yeah i mean i don't think i would be bothered as in i thought that she would be corrupt or crooked but i, I just i i even with christy or with any of them i they've they they crossed the line of politics of pure opportunity they are only saying the things they are saying now because that was where they could carve out a place for themselves mm-hmm and if they could carve out a place for themselves by loving Trump, they would. I think that's exactly what they would be doing. I don't think Chris They're, Christie would at this point. I think that he would. I, I, I those people oh, have God. no integrity. The, you cannot erase the past for me, and it yeah, was yeah. not that long ago. I mean, if it was fifty years ago, I, I maybe, I could see it. But they were. This was two years, just two years ago. He was a great man, and if you and I didn't like him, we weren't real Americans. And I, yeah. I, I can't. But I can't I see. I, Trump, yeah. Trump has nicknames for all these guys. Trump goes and talks all this smack, and then when they think that they have an opportunity, like Josh is saying, to get a job from him, they all kiss his no, ass and well, they forget the, that the, he just called his wife. What, what did he yeah. call Cruz's wife? You know, and all this stuff, and they have no integrity at all. Yeah, yeah. At all. <laughs> that, that that's correct. But you know, the fact is that, uh, um, that, that, for instance, DeSantis. I mean, he has just vilified DeSantis. Yeah, he hates uh, him. And, and DeSantis still won't uh, deny him. I mean, you know? I'm, I'm not necessarily mm -hmm. saying that I don't think some of the things that she said or that Christie said they they might not have a belief of. Such, such as that he's unfit or things like that. I'm saying that they may genuinely believe those things, but my point is, I think they also believed those things three or four years ago, and mm. they knew it, and they still wouldn't say it publicly and worked for him with well, the spot. What, what is it? Just quickly, In because we're opinion. running out of time here, and we, we I, I need a simple... Give us a simple answer. Okay. <laughs> uh, what is it about Trump that just, they're afraid even, you know, you're in a debate, you're running for president, or for trying to get the nomination, you're up against Trump, shouldn't you be saying bad things about Donald Trump? 
Yeah, Isn't that yeah. the way you campaign? Oh, my candidate, if he, you know. Plus, you got so much material. I mean, Trump basically is saying if he's elected back into office, he's basically going to be Hitler. You know, he's yeah. basically going to be a Nazi. Okay. Uh, They're that, all cheering for this like a nut house. Yeah, really. and and he's not lying to you. You know, if you if you he's vote, actually, he might be right. He's being honest. vote for once. him, and you you know, if you vote for him, you're voting to end our democracy. Okay, I'll say that plain and simple. And that's not because I'm paranoid about him or because I don't like him. I absolutely love Donald Trump otherwise. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm but I mean, it's just it's just amazing. Just yeah, amazing. It's bizarre. You know, that, that people go, oh, I'm going to vote for him. What? I mean, the guy who says that on day one he's going to be a dictator? <laughs> I'll kill you on day one. You got my vote? <laughs> that's right. Yeah. <laughs> really? What's going on here? Well, that's that's because, you know, they've, They've turned that into this little niche now where, well, yeah, being a dictator means building the damn border fence. That's fine with me. They don't need to ask no Congress for that. You know what? That, that, I mean, that's they've turned it into that. It's yeah, it's again, it's making an excuse for the things that they can't get done within our our system that they just a few weeks ago or a few years ago claimed they loved, you know, yeah. so. Why that's happening, man, I don't know. You're going to get a psychologist on for that because it's. Yeah, I I'm only trained to analyze what did happen. I don't know that I'm well enough trained to analyze what is happening. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I mean it, that it, but it yeah it's 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 complete stupidity. Yeah. So I mean that's what I'm saying. I you know I'm not I won't say like Nikki Haley or or Christie or anyone uh, the rest of them even you know are like bad people or anything like that. Like we were talking about earlier. I just mm -hmm. I just don't like the way that a lot of that happened I, I think they do believe those things i think they believed him three years ago but i think they overlooked him to get where they are today well nikki haley and was I in fact it was in fact trump's uh, um, envoy yeah. to the u.n mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know um you know these are people that were currying his favor at one point but then you know they were currying his favor while he was president of the united states and that makes a little more sense than if you curry him when he's running around saying, you know, I'm going to be a dictator on day one. Mm -hmm. You know, this is this is ridiculous. And why you don't just get up there and vilify him? And uh, what's his name? Uh, DeSantis couldn't run for dog catcher right now. You know? I mean, he is just so, so weak. And he can't doesn't even know how to smile. That's uh, that's the real fun yeah, part of it. He was supposed to be the big man, remember, you know, remember? Mm. He was well, by the way, the I'm about ready to play the theme here. And when I play it, I'm going to turn up my, hold on a second, let me turn up my speaker here. Tell me right. if you hear it. I think that what happens is on, um, um, uh, what do you call it, on this system, Zoom, they block out music that isn't, oh, is, 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 that isn't paying royalties. Yeah. Although this is, but listen, can can you hear it? Wait a minute. Can't hear it, huh? Nothing. I'm playing it really Nothing. loud, and I've got the speaker up and everything. Wow, that's amazing. Okay, well, anyway, the theme is playing. Hey, thanks, everybody. I've really enjoyed this. Uh, Brian, yeah. thanks for sticking with us through that arduous ride. And please tell Adrian it was nice to see her mug. Uh, uh, also, thank you so much, Josh. I'll see you tomorrow night. Uh, but the, don't don't plan on hearing it, folks, because we say the, things. Don't you go wouldn't... to dinner. Don't go to dinner together, though. Then we're gonna get upset. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Tony, thank you for being here. Jeff, thank you, and a big thank you to uh, Alan as well. Everybody, give a big wave goodbye, and I will give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay. There they go. That's the citizen panel for tonight, folks. Uh, and uh, they'll be back again next week, a lot of them. I will see you uh, on Monday, right, for the uh, pop-up show that goes out over Facebook at 4 o'clock in the afternoon Eastern time. And then I'll see you again. Let's see here. Oh, yes. Um, well, first of all, let me say uh, Amy Manuel is next with The Intersection. You can call her at GabNet Live, at GabNet Live on Skype. I'll see you again on Wednesday, same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, 
tell her I love her, okay? Night, everybody. Have a good weekend.